This production has been brought to you by the Fresno Mycology Society. We are here at Sun Smiling Valley Farms, a local mushroom farm in Fresno, California, where they are redefining what it means to provide high quality gourmet food products to the Central Valley. Established nine years ago in 2006 by Jiro Watanuki, the first thing that stands out about this company is that, from the roadside, you can hardly notice that a full scale farming operation is taking place within the modest confines of this 7,000 square foot steel building. Conventional agricultural practices will require many times more growing space to produce an equivalent quantity of product and revenue. Truckloads of the finest Douglas and white fur chips are brought around back to be processed. These wood types are specifically chosen to simulate the natural substrate that the different Asiatic mushroom species grown here would naturally be growing on. The chips are loaded up and hauled into the first of two hoppers the first of which is designed to sift out the larger pieces leaving only the finer particles to provide an even consistency. After the desired size of which it falls through the sieve, they drop down into the conveyor which sends it to the second hopper. At this stage, wheat middlings are added into the wood media to provide extra nutrition to the growing mushroom cultures. A specific weight of water is also added to provide the proper environment for quick and healthy growth. Like the first hopper, the media falls to the bottom of the mixer where it is carried by a conveyor and loaded into the top of the bottom machine. Trays of empty bottles are automatically put into position to be first loaded with the media by an agitator which slides out from the bottom of the holding container and administers the perfect quantity of substrate to each bottle. Then the plungers drop down to evenly pack the loosely loaded media to specific density for proper mycelial growth. The tapper plungers function to ensure an even consistency free of air pockets as well as to leave a hollowed core which will serve as the inoculation point later. From here the filled trays travel to the capping machine which seals a specifically designed lid onto each bottle. The lid is designed to allow for adequate air exchange while also preventing foreign fungal and bacterial contamination from falling into the cultures. Sterilization is one of the most vital steps in the process because the environment created within each bottle, while perfect for mushroom growth, is also the perfect environment for molds and bacteria. To ensure complete sterility, Sun Smiley Valley Farm uses a high capacity steam oven which effectively kills all microbial activity. After the bottles are steamed for 9 hours, they are wheeled at the back end of the oven where they are left to cool. It is at this time that each bottle is at its highest risk of contamination due to the high nutrient media that is free from all microbial competition, a literal smorgasbord for any prospective microbe. In order to prevent such contamination, every inch of the holding room in the adjacent inoculation room is cleansed with 91% isopropyl alcohol and each room is left under high intensity germicidal UV lights for at least 15 hours prior to inoculation. After the rooms are sufficiently sterilized and the bottles have cooled, they are wheeled into a neighboring inoculation room where a minimal team of clean suit clad workers loads each bottle onto the inoculation carousel. The carousel breaks up a small quantity of spawn from a bottle that has already been fully colonized by the desired mushroom mycelium and deposits it into the central hollow of the sterile bottles. This technique owes itself to the extraordinary characteristic of fungal networks that allows nearly every part of itself to separate while being fully self-sufficient. The bottle that is specifically selected to serve as seed for the next generation of cultures is the one that shows the highest rate of vigor and is free of any defects or contamination. After the bottles have been inoculated, they are stacked onto pallets and moved to the first of several growth rooms, each with precisely dialed environmental controls which regulate humidity, temperature, as well as fresh air circulation. Because all these varieties of mountain dwelling mushrooms grow in a similar climate, there is no need to separate them into their own rooms with different climate controls. This first growth room is set at 80-85% to humidity at 15 degrees Celsius. This simulates the summer growth period when these fungi are primarily concerned with colonizing and consuming the highest amount of substrate possible in preparation for the upcoming fruiting season. Once these pallets have been loaded into this incubation room, the lights are doused and they will remain in the dark until they are ready to fruit. After the fungi have fully colonized the growing bottles, they are prepped for the fruiting phase. In order to allow for a clean and vigorous fruiting, this machine shaves away the stray mycelial growth that is crowded into the bottleneck. In doing this, they provide the ideal spot for the mycelial mass to concentrate its fruiting potential. After the shaving, they are rehydrated as the mycelium has used up most of the water that was held inside the substrate during the growth cycle. At this point, the prepared growing bottles are moved into the next environmentally controlled room which simulates the transitional phase between summer and fall where the fungi begin the fruiting phase. 
The lids are removed and the bottles are flipped upside down in order to keep falling airborne contaminants from landing into the still vulnerable cultures. The very first stages of fruiting are seen here, where the mycelium knots into clumps known as primordia. This transition, known as pinning, is induced primarily by the climate becoming cooler and more humid. Here, temperatures are kept at 13.5 degrees Celsius and 95% humidity. Once the primordial pins have covered the opening of the bottleneck, they are ready to move again. After the bottles are moved into this fruiting room, they are flipped right side up once again because the danger from falling airborne contaminants is negligible now that the fruiting bodies are firmly established. At this stage, we can finally see the different kinds of mushroom bodies. Here we begin to see some noticeable mushroom-like features such as the caps and stems. The environmental controls are the same here as they were in the pinning room we just saw. 13.5 degrees centigrade and 95% humidity. The only difference is that the lights are cycled on during the day to encourage upward growth. This is the final room where the mushrooms come to fully mature. Again, the environmental settings are just as they were in the previous two rooms. Here we can clearly distinguish each of the mushroom varieties grown here. These are beach mushrooms, which have a buttery nutty flavor with a firm and crunchy quality and work wonderfully in soups and stir-fry. As to their nutritional value, these mushrooms contain significant quantities of the potent compound beta-glucan, which has demonstrated anti-carcinogenic, antiviral, and anti-tumor qualities, as well as being a beneficial immunomodulator. We have shimiji, also known as blue oysters. Like most oyster mushrooms, blue oysters contain high levels of proteins, amino acids, vitamin B, vitamin D, and glucosamine, as well as various minerals such as iron potassium. Oysters have also been revealed in multiple studies to significantly reduce cholesterol levels. This variety is known by many names such as the king oyster, king trumpet, or french horn mushroom. The health benefits of this mushroom cannot be understated. It contains the powerful amino acid antioxidant ergothionine and the cholesterol reducing compound lovastatin, which has been shown to greatly improve cardiovascular health. Both the king and blue oyster have also been shown to be powerful bioremediators, meaning that they can be used to break down harmful pollutants into their inert components. And here we have Enochia. Enochis are given an extra long paper neck to support their spindly form. These mushrooms are often incorporated in soups and salad in many Vietnamese and Korean dishes. They have been shown to harbor many antioxidants including ergothionine as well as a novel protein called FIP5 which has been shown to possess immunoregulatory properties. Once the mushrooms have reached full maturity, they are ready to be removed from the bottles and packaged. A skilled worker removes them from the bottle and selects them individually to be packaged in one of three grades. First grade are perfectly shaped and sized and are without blemish. The second grade are also without blemish but are not perfect size and form. The third grade are those that are bruised and very small. All are priced respective to their quality. The bottoms of the mushrooms are also sold as soup cakes. After they have been cut and grated, they are wrapped in plastic and are either immediately distributed or placed into cold storage until they are sold. Another method they utilize is sun drying, which involves cutting them into thin slices and placing them onto larger baskets. They are placed out in the sun until they are ideally dried. After the mushrooms have been harvested, the remaining substrate is removed by this machine that uses specialized bits to scrape out the mycelial mass. The pulverized product is carried on a conveyor belt into the bed of a truck where it is later hauled off and turned into a rich garden compost. The clean bottles are then sent full circle to be filled with more media to start the whole process over again. In this way, Sun Smiley Valley Farms cuts out the only major waste stream produced by most other mushroom farms, that being the non-reusable plastic bags that hold the cultures that are thrown out once the mushrooms are harvested. Once again, this production was brought to you by the Fresno Mycology Society, networking to inform the Central Valley of its fungal allies.